So here we are, the important one, the one where I promised we'd do all the awesome randomization goodness that I showed you at the beginning of the last video. Well, let's get into it. So I've got my fresh scene here. Let me just create a cube. I've got one cube, I'm gonna duplicate it a bunch of times. Grab all these, let's just duplicate it. Ton of times, grab them all, keep duplicating. Now I've got about, you know, almost 400 cubes. Select them all, and let's begin. Let's start off kind of where we left off. Where I did import Maya.cmds as cmds. So we have access to all the Maya commands. And let's just type our for loop out. For i in cmds.ls sl true true. True. <laughs> Make sure you type true like this. Uh, so let's begin. Okay, I got I CMDS done. Lost my train of thought. The trio thing just threw me for a loop big time. It threw me for a loop. You get it? <laughs> All right. Keep the dad jokes to myself. So let's just type that CMDS again, CMDS dot, and let's do set adder. If you remember, we were doing get adder before, but this time we don't want to get the attributes. We want to set the attributes. So just change the G to an S. No longer a G, I'm sorry to say. So let's put the quotations there, put the placeholder, the curly brackets, and then let's just do trans late x for now okay and we have to give set out an additional you know an additional um, parameter an additional argument is what you call it in python and these are arguments because this is a command and commands they take arguments and what is an argument it's just like different values that you want to give it so in here i just, I just want to say 10 right and of course we have to format this string. So let's not forget to do that. Let's put the dot format here and let's put I. So we're taking that I, putting it down here and then this I is getting put into here. So with all these things we're selected. So now if I run this code, it's gonna move every single cube to 10 units in translate X. Nothing that crazy. So if I move this little video thing, you can see translate X right there, 10, but it's done it for all these cubes here. It's not too crazy, right? So hopefully you're still following along. But we don't wanna just move all of them 10 units. We wanna actually do something a little bit more interesting. We wanna randomize this 10 value so it's not just 10 each time. So if I come back up here, let's import, let's import random. And this is built into Python, this random uh, module just like kind of how we imported Maya.cmds, we're importing this other module, and this is built within Python, so you can use it in all your Python scripts. But inside of this random module, there's some functions. So there's some like commands, or functions as you call them, that we can use in order to do a bit of randomization. We can get random values back. So let's just begin. I wanna hit enter, make a new line, make sure it's indented. Type random dot uniform like this. And I'll put some values. I'll put negative 10 and 10. So what this command is gonna do is it's gonna give us a random number between minus 10 and 10. So let me copy this guy. I'll just put it up here and I'll run this on its own. So I have to run all this so that we import random first. So let's run all that. It's not gonna give us a result, but if I just print it, then I can see the result. So there we go. It's just giving us a negative eight. And each time I run this, I'm gonna get a different value. It's just randomizing, it's randomly picking a number between these. And it's not just giving me a whole number, it's giving me a decimal number. That's what this uniform is. There's another random, you know, like function called rand int. And if I run this, you can see it's giving me an integer, a whole number. But we want to use uniform, so it's a little bit cooler to have just 
a floating point number because you know like when you're translating in Maya you can see if I move this over you can see in the in the channel box it's it's just a decimal number so if we randomize but to whole numbers it'll be doing something like this where it's just kind of moving along this grid it's not as interesting if you know you move it along the grid but you, you can do that you know it's totally up to you if you wanted to use whole numbers you can just type ran int there rather than uniform but uniform will give us a float number so if I grab this get this code select everything again so it's all selected rather than just running this code like this we, we want to actually store the value that it gives us so we can do that by adding it into a variable so I'm just gonna call this variable rand num equals so random number and then it's gonna run this command and it's gonna store the random number in this variable I called rand num and then I can use this variable here and instead of 10 I can say you know it's equal to ran number which is a random number so now if I run this code you can straight away see you're getting a random number between negative 10 and 10 and it's just kind of like distributing all these cubes you know based on that random number and it's because it's inside this loop it's gonna run through each one of these cubes I have selected and then it's gonna perform these actions underneath this for loop and basically every time it runs this action it's gonna use this random it's gonna generate a random number it's gonna use the random number in this set attribute command and that's how we're getting this randomized translation here like this that's pretty cool and we can also do it to translate Z for example for run this code again now it's randomizing it in translate Z and if I change this to Y it's gonna randomize the translate Y now and you can see now we're kind of now we're cooking you know now it looks like what we what we kind of want to get towards but you can see that we still got to do a little bit of manual work we have to change this value each time and that's not really that cool you know it's still a little bit of manual work you have to change it select it run it again change it select it run it again what if I just wanted to randomize all three axes at the same time well we can do something a little bit crazy a little bit like inception where we have a loop within a loop all right I'm gonna zero all this out zero it all out so it's all back you know at the origin zero 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 value for the translates now let's do this loop within a loop thing so if I come down here and I make a new line right I can say for a I'm using a here because if I use I again it's gonna conflict with the I up there you know Python is not going to know whether I is equal to the item that we're looping over you know like each iteration each iteration of the loop has a different you know cube that it's it's working on it's not going to know if it's the cube name that we want or whatever we put in this for loop it's going to clash so I'm going to use a different letter you know I'm going to use a so I'm going to say a in and I'm going to create a list now and inside this list I want X capital X capital Y and capital Z you know it's a string but it's just one character but it's a capitalized character and you can kind of start to see where I'm going now if I you know come down here in a tab so that it indents this one so I want this to be under this loop now so rather than just manually doing translate Y X and Z and changing this here we can let Python do it for us so I can use that placeholder open curly bracket close curly bracket and in this format I'm gonna add an additional item I'm gonna add this a now so I'm gonna add the a there so every time it does this loop it's gonna run this code it's gonna give me a random value and then it's gonna run a loop within this first loop and now in this loop what it's doing is it's taking this a value which is you know any one of these things in here it's gonna run three times because we have three items in here and each time it runs it's gonna 
grab one of these values and store it in A. So now that we have like this A value, we can use this A variable in this format. So we're basically formatting the name I, which is here. It's the name of the object we have selected. And then A, which is one of these letters here, X, Y, or Z. And it'll be either one of them based on each iteration of the loop. So it'll put the name of the object I here, the first placeholder we have. And in the second placeholder, it's going to put one of these letters, these capitalized letters, A. So it could be like translate X, translate Y, translate Z. So let's just run this code now. You'll see what happens. Boom. Now it's done it. It's moved it in all three axes, X, Y, and Z. But as you can see, it's not quite doing what we want because it's all along this line still, even though it's, it's, it's moved it all three axes. You can see here, it's got three different values here and it's kind of cool in its own, you know, cool way. But what if we wanted to do it like randomly all over space like that? Well, you can see all these values are the same. It's because we're only getting one set of random values each time we run this code. So how do we get three sets of random values, you know, for the translate X, Y, and Z, I want different values. Well, basically we can just take this line and move it underneath this code. So rather than getting one set of random values for each object, I'm getting a random set of values for each, for each object, first of all, but within that for each different axis we're getting a different randomized value. So let's run this again. And now, now you see we get a series of different random values in each one of the translates. So that's, that's what we want. And now we've come full circle. Now we've made it. We've done the code that I showed you guys in the last video, where if we run this now, you can see it's randomizing all the cubes in all three axes. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? So we could also do like a bunch of other stuff. So actually, let me keep this little video thing there so we can see the channel box still. I'm gonna change this to rotate. So it's not translate anymore. And instead of negative 10 and 10, it's gonna give us a random value between that. Actually, let me run this. You can see I'm getting values between negative 10 and 10. That's not that extreme of a rotation. But if I change this to like negative you know, 180 and one positive 180, it's going to give me a value between these. So if I run this now, now I'll get a lot more extreme rotations. You can see like that. That's pretty cool. So that's how you kind of you know, randomize translates and rotates. If you wanted to go one step further, if you're a madman, you can have another loop. So you can add both translate and rotates into this code in one go. Let's actually do that because I'm a madman. All right. So let's add a third loop. I'm going to add it above this X, Y, Z. It doesn't really matter if you add it above or below, but I think for me, I like, I like to kind of, I feel like a translate and rotate should be above. So let's just type out this code again, and I'm going to give it another variable name. Maybe let's give it N in another list like this, rotate. And now I can shift indent all this code. So it's within that loop. And instead of rotate here, I'm going to use N. You see what I, you see where I'm going? So this N would be, you know, one of these two for like each iteration. It'll, it'll be one of these two things. So, putting this placeholder here. Now I want to add an additional item here, which is N. So it would be I, which is the object name. Then it would be the one of the attribute names, translate or rotate. And then A would be one of the axis, X, Y, or Z. So now let me just zero everything out so we can start from scratch again. It's all zeroed out at the origin. Run this code and you can see it's done it. It's moved everything, but it's done at negative 180 and 180. So obviously it's going to be a bigger, bigger translation because negative 180 and 180 
you know, in each translate direction is bigger. But yeah, that's just the way you can uh, basically randomize and rotate, randomize translates and rotate, you know, all within eight lines of code. Three for loops, that's, uh, that's crazy. That's pretty crazy. Hey, so as promised, we, we made it full circle. We did the randomization. So now, you know, what's next? That is the big question. What the hell is next? Well, you'll have to find out, wouldn't you? So stick around. Mm -hmm.